from its headwaters high in the Rockies to its delta in Mexico more than 1,400 miles downstream. The arid Colorado River Basin serves more than 35 million people within many diverse environments and uses in the seven western states and Mexico. For more than 100 years, its waters, through the development of huge reservoirs, were adequate for these demands. However, a new reality is dramatically changing the way water managers are working in the West today and planning for the West of tomorrow. We now know that we will need to adapt to less supply and more demand for Colorado River water during the next 50 years. Use of this vital resource has been the lifeblood of cities throughout the West. It has been a resource for recreation, anglers, cities, energy, agriculture, and the environment, and has sustained life for centuries. The river works hard today, producing energy for many Western states. But its biggest role is in food production, and agriculture is the biggest user on the river. Agriculture uses 85% of the basin's waters, providing most of our winter vegetables and a large part of our summer food supply. During the next 50 years, water managers in the West will face significant challenges and tough decisions in order to provide water for all the users who depend on the river. Balancing these needs will require careful resource planning, conservation and cooperation from each state and every user in the basin. When you look at the last 14 to 15 years, we've seen more dry years than we've seen average and wet. In 2013, the definitive Colorado River Basin Water Supply and Demand Study showed that the current demand for water already exceeds the annual supply and that the demands will increase in the future due to population growth, new energy demands, agriculture, and changes in climate within the arid Colorado River Basin. Looking out 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 years, uh, we're going to see what we've seen in the last 15 years. Uh, it might get a little better, but the general trend is for dryness and the general trend is for more water uh, demands. Uh, you put those together and you get a large uh, gap, if you want to call it, where the demand for the resource is going to far exceed the available supply. With this new water supply and demand imbalance comes a variety of new challenges. One of the most pressing is the effect it could have on clean, inexpensive hydroelectric power generated at Glen Canyon Dam, Hoover Dam, and elsewhere along the river's journey. What we've seen recently is that the reservoir level has dropped. The head has gone down, so we're producing less power now. Uh, we're also seeing lower flows, so we're delivering less water out of the power plants. So we're seeing a reduction in hydroelectric production. If this drought continues like it has in the last 15 years or so, we could reach a point where the water behind these large dams goes below the intakes for the power plants. Reduced hydroelectric output would cause rates to increase because we will need to purchase replacement power from other sources, such as coal-fired electric plants. This will also dramatically reduce federal hydroelectric revenues that currently support programs that protect water quality and endangered fish health within the Colorado River Basin. In the long run, what we have to do on the Colorado River is, is recognize that we have to use our water supplies in a much smarter way. Uh, we have to conserve. In the growing season, 50% of municipal water use goes to sustain outdoor residential landscaping along the heavily populated Front Range and across the rest of Colorado. If warming continues, all outdoor irrigation will demand more water, including the agricultural sector producing the West's important crops and livestock. This collision of demands will change how we use water. Expansive suburban lawns will likely become an unsustainable luxury in the future and will become smaller in size. Gradually, large expanses of grass from fence to foundation will be replaced with less water-intensive landscaping using native plants that are adapted to the naturally arid landscapes of Colorado and the West. 
Uh, we have large trans mountain diversions uh, out of the headwaters of the Colorado going to the East Slope cities. Well, half of their demands is for outdoor lawn watering. Our agricultural production is for pasture grass and for alfalfa. Same is true in the lower basin. In a big portion of their consumptive use in their cities, is simply to water outdoor lawns. Should we be considering other ways that don't include sets intensive use of outdoor watering, especially for landscapes, especially for things like people's backyards? We probably have more than enough water in the basin, even with climate change, uh, to meet our needs for a long, long time. Uh, and, and the same is true in agriculture. We're going to have to really focus on what are those crops that we can grow that support the whole agricultural economy. The economics are going to move toward allocation of water to the higher uses. In the near future, as demand increases, we will see higher costs for both municipal and agricultural water. This will change how we use water and, in turn, reward better conservation and efficiency. Well, the new scenario for water in the future is going to be limit your outdoor use. It's going to be build up, not out. Uh, in the past, uh, one of those large homes with a large lot could use an acre foot of water. Uh, today, the planners in the metro area are saying we can get four families to live off one acre foot of water. And the way they've done that is they've, they've said your footprint, your grass footprint is going to have to be much smaller. It doesn't mean you can't have some nice landscaping. It's just not going to be anywhere near as large as it was in the past. Land use planners and developers are adapting to the realities of water in the West by creating smaller water use scenarios. Conservation, reuse techniques, and designing growth in such a way that water use is significantly less than before. In existing developments, landscapes will begin to change in character and adapt to the arid Western climate. More native plants and less water intensive designs must evolve. A lot of people can still live here and live very, very comfortably and have a great quality of life. And there can be water in the river. We just have to figure out how to conserve what we use as people. Future water in the West means we will adapt to the new water reality within the Colorado River Basin. From its headwaters in the Rockies to its delta in Mexico, new strategies will be needed. Agriculture, cities, energy, and recreation will need to work together. There will be few, if any, new large reservoir storage options. As we move through the 21st century, the new solution will be based on conservation and efficiency of a finite supply within the landscape of new population growth. Any new strategies of water planning will need to balance existing hydroelectric on the river while keeping the river basin's aquatic systems whole and healthy for generations to come. In the future, we will manage water by working together in the Colorado River Basin. The West's new priorities must include even greater conservation of municipal water, smarter growth, xeriscape landscaping, and more productive and less water-intensive agriculture, all while keeping the river system healthy in the future, growth in the basin will be based on a shared responsibility of all of the water users within the seven states and Mexico who share the mighty Colorado.